Okay, let's dive in and now I'll be even quicker than I was going to be before. So let's talk about specifying the appropriate wireless system. I was really just talking about the technically appropriate wireless system. Um, so that you can meet the requirements and keep you out of tr trouble later on. I'm trying to give you things to think about before you choose so that later on you're not limited by what you've chosen. So uh, why use mi wireless mics at all uh, and not wired mics? Uh, well, maybe you want, uh, you have a reconfigurable room and you want to uh, be able to move your mics around as needed. Maybe you have a presenter who's mobile. Maybe you just don't like the looks of wires, so aesthetics. So these are all reasons why we go wireless. Uh, or, or maybe you have that boardroom that no one's going to touch and put a hole in, all right? So uh, we've, we've decided to go wireless, but uh, there's going to be some complexity that comes with wireless. So I'm not here to scare you away from wireless, but just some things to think about if, if you, weren't, you weren't aware of. And, you know, wireless is awesome, so no problem there. So the first consideration with wireless is you need to be able to avoid interference. And, you know, what interference are we talking about? Um, it's missing right here, but we're talking one is system-to-system uh, -system interference. Uh, and that's when you just have more than one microphone in the room. Those microphones do interact with each other. Um, and I'm going to come back to that. And outside interference, which is basically digital television. But you also have other wireless technology, whether that's cordless phones or headsets, um, other microphones. So again, when I was talking about that system-to-system -system interference between two microphones, one is two microphones have to be set on different frequencies. And I know it seems obvious, but uh, it also needs to be frequencies that are n not near each other too, and I'm talking about close to each other. Otherwise, the wireless, the, the RF that's being transmitted from this microphone right here gets into the electronics of your second microphone and produces what are called intermods. I'm not going to go into any further than that, but just know that this is a real world thing that you need to worry about. And uh, intermods also limit how many microphones you can get up at one time. And we're going to come back to that as well. Hey, there's the rest of my slide. All right. I know. I, I can't say that's happened to me before. So there we go. Um, so my next consideration is the limit of microphones in a room. If you had wired mics, and this is what we're all used to, have as many mics as you want. Just throw them in. But wireless does have limitations, and we're going to talk about that as well. Again, if you just need a couple mics, then don't worry about it. But if you need eight or more mics, you need to look a little bit further into your microphone system that you're choosing. If you, want, if you don't want wires, then you're going to have batteries. And you could go with traditional batteries, but uh, depending on how much you use wireless mics, that can be a real significant expense as time goes on. So this is something to think about. So, you know, we, we recommend rechargeable batteries. It's the way to go. It's the greenest solution. It's the best solution. And there's some other things that come along with the technology that I'll talk about that, uh, that are a plus. And then the last one is antennas. If you've got a wireless system, then you're dealing with antennas. And ideally, those antennas are in the same room to give you the best chance of having a good, clean, good, reliable wireless connection. All right, so let's dive a little deeper into these four topics. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we can't talk about avoiding interference without first talking about what frequency band you're in. And traditionally, uh, the UHF TV band is where wireless microphones have operated, and that's what we're, we're used to dealing with. But now there are many choices, and that's what I kind of wanted to make you aware of um, if you hadn't thought about these other choices. Which are the best is very application specific. So I'm not here to recommend one or the other. There's pros and cons. So I'm going to just give you some quick pros and cons just to kind of get you in the ballpark. And that's where I wanted this guy. Yes. Boy, I am just striking out. But good thing I have a second one. Hey, that one works. All right. All right. So the UHF spectrum is this guy area right here from 470 to 698. And that's a big swath of spectrum that we can use. Um, and that gives you a lot of microphones in one, you know, in one area. So high channel counts. 
but I gotta tell you that that space is going away. If you weren't aware, there is gonna be another auction auctioning off part of the spectrum. You know, a good quarter to a third of it might be gone. That's a whole other topic. Feel free to come and talk to me if you want about it, but that's gonna happen March 29th. The FCC is going to uh, buy back spectrum from TV stations and then it's gonna sell it to the broadband mobile carriers so that we can all have our portable phones. Um, so, you know, we just did this uh, a few years ago when analog television transitioned to digital television. Uh, now it's happening again. Still lots of space left, but something to be a little concerned about if you want to be in the UHF TV band. So, a next option is the 900 megahertz band, which is right about here, uh, a little bit above there. Um, not necessarily better than UHTV, but it's not going to be in the auction. <laughs> So that's good. And as far as other bands I'm going to talk about, it's not as crowded as the 2.4 gigahertz band. But there's limitations in this as well. You get shorter range. This is recommended not for outdoor use, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, but it is a good option. The decked band refers to uh, 1.92 to 1.93 gigahertz. Uh, it's called deck band because that's what everyone calls it. Actually, that's a European name for it, or maybe the rest of the world. In the United States, it's called the UPCS band, uh, but we still just call it the deck band. Now, this has uh, great potential, especially for speech applications. Um, part of the technology in the deck band gives you automatic frequency coordination, meaning it picks the frequencies for you. It finds clean frequencies. You don't have to set a receiver and a transmitter and sync them together. It does it automatically for you. And if there is any interference, uh, it does frequency hopping for you, again, automatically. Part of the technology also includes bi-directional control, meaning not only is the microphone going to the receiver, but the receiver can communicate back to the microphone. It can send audio back to the microphone. Uh, it can send mute status. You get remote control over your mute status, your volume, uh, as well as seeing metrics, you know, seeing remote monitoring. So that's really great. But like I said, there is a downside to the deck band. Part of the technology is there's latency involved. So if we're talking about music or performance, maybe that's not a good option. But for speech application, it's just great. And last but not least, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, that's where Wi-Fi operates. That's up here. This isn't exactly accurate, but you get the idea. Um, this also has automatically frequency coordination and hopping and bi-directional control but you're sharing it with Wi-Fi, and that can be incredibly unpredictable. And, uh, and there's some other finer points that I'm gonna talk about next. So I kinda wanted to give you a, look at that. I wanted to give you a quick story um, about being aware of what frequency band you're in. Uh, we're gonna talk about the UHF TV band, which if you're in Chicago, is really crowded. It's, it's, uh, I've been told by RF gurus it's one of the worst places uh, in the world. And that might have something to do with the fact that, uh, and right now we're on the 57th floor of the Chase Building, and if you look out one window, you've got the Willis Tower with its antennas transmitting millions of watts of TV broadcast. And then you look out the other window and there's the Hancock Building also broadcasting. So you're just getting bombarded. Uh, I'm not sure who specified the microphone system for this particular floor, but they couldn't get eight channels of wireless microphones up, and they had a good product, one of ours, and they couldn't get eight channels up. It kept getting dropouts. So we went to check it out, and I did a scan, and this is what I'm talking about. What we're looking at here is the frequency band they were in was in the UHF TV band, our J50 band in particular, which goes from TV station 31 up to TV station 41. And even 41, by the way, it's not the whole TV station, it's about two thirds of it. And every band is filled with a TV station. 37 doesn't count because that's the radio astronomy channel, you can't use that. And 41 is the only free TV station in this particular band and we only have two thirds of it. Um, but once we realized that and using this um, frequency coordination software, uh, we pretty much limited the software to say, okay, you gotta choose 41. We're able to get eight channels up, it worked just fine. But they were trying to operate over here and were failing. So this is where they shouldn't have really been in this band. It's, it's bad in Chicago, but it's not always that bad. If they were in the G50 band, there's a few more choices, for example. 
And if you weren't in Chicago, here's the exact same frequency band, J50. This is in Minneapolis. And you know, there's lots of free space here. So not a concern, not a problem. But there's where a little thought ahead of time, let alone doing a scan you know, on site, should have been done in the first place. Um, yeah, so there's the end of that story. All right. So back to this graph again, but now we're going to talk about another limitation or consideration, which is how many microphone systems can you get up at the same time in these frequency bands? And this is part of the technology as well as the spectrum available. UHTV, you can currently get up to about 160 channels, give or take a lot. That depends on the quality and, and your system. But just to put you in the ballpark, 100, 160 channels. And that's in the current 228 megahertz spectrum, which as I told you, will be shrinking. Don't need to worry about that for another three or four years, but it is going away. 900 megahertz uh, has 26 megahertz of spectrum. You're only going to get about 12 microphones up at best. Again, this is dependent on whether or not you're sharing that space with any other wireless technology. Deck band up to 44, and that's pretty cool considering there's only 10 megahertz of space that we're using. If you're interested, that's done because uh, part of that deck band technology uh, uses TDM, which stands for time division multiplexing, where it actually slices up a frequency into little time slots. And so you're actually sharing time over the same frequency. It's one of the reasons why it has that latency that I mentioned before. 2.4 gigahertz. Um, some people spec up to 8. I've seen one even spec up to 12. Um, it's not really realistic because you're sharing that space with so many other devices. So typically you're going to get about 4. So that's what I mean by think ahead of time about how many microphones you want. If you just, again, four or less, pick wherever you want. But if you're saying, ah, I need 16 channels, well, we can already rule out a couple of these frequency bands, can't we? All right. And again, this is, you know, when I say 160, that's if you had no other, if you weren't sharing that space with anybody else. You still need to know your RF environment, whether or not you're sharing that with other TV stations, which you probably are, and other wireless systems. Okay. So a quick story about that. So here is a multi-purpose room. It's three rooms, or it's one room that's divisible into three rooms. And uh, 64 channels of decked band microphones were spec'd for this room. And we successfully got 64 microphones up in this space, off hours. Turn these guys on during business hours and suddenly we couldn't get 64. In fact, we could only get around 40 channels. What's up? We do a little investigation. And by a little, I mean we walked across the hall and found this. And this isn't an actual photo, but cubicles with everyone wearing their headsets, their Jabra headsets or whoever. But anyway, those headsets also operate in the deck band. And when those guys fire up, now that we're sharing space with them, and boom, it, th and these, these headsets quite often come out of the package at full power uh, because the manufacturer wants it to work or be as impressive as possible. Um, and, and, and there was our problem. Uh, I guess to talk another minute about it, we, we then we talked to the owners of this business, well, can we do something about this because you want your microphones to work, don't you? And they were kind of like, no, we're not going to do anything about that. And we're like, well, can you at least go around and have them turn down their transmitting power? No, we're, we're not going to do that. And we were the ones left having to solve the problem. You, you know, it seemed a little surprising because most businesses have limitations. You can't bring in a Wi-Fi router and fire that guy up, but somehow deck ban is wild west. I don't know. So we had to then um, change some of the microphones over to other parts of the spectrum. And that's what I, I would recommend you do. So the next uh, topic I want to bring up is rechargeable batteries. I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I was saying there was some benefits besides the fact that you have to use batteries, but if you're going to use batteries, let's use rechargeable. You know, with, with, with good technology and rechargeable batteries, you're able to not only see how much time is left in bars and all that, you can see how much is left in hours and minutes. And so that's going to alleviate your concern about when's this battery going to die. So I think that's a plus to rechargeable batteries. As well as you can get software or an app that's going to let you remotely see how much is left on that battery and you know, give you some sort of alert, at least turn red, and then you know whether or not to go swap out that transmitter 
or swap out that battery. So, um, so that. But I do feel like that is a concern with, with, with using batteries is, what, what if I do if the battery's dead? Well, you know, just have a backup plan. Um, a lot of microphones al allow you to plug in. This microphone has a USB port, so you can just plug it into the wall and keep it going. It stays on as well as continues to charge the battery. Um, you can have uh, other form factors let you swap out the rechargeable battery. Just have some chargeable batteries already ready to go and swap it out. Or also some, some systems let you just use alkaline batteries. Have those on hand and you know you should be covered if, if a microphone runs out. Antennas. The reason I bring this up is because quite often antenna, micro, wireless systems get put, up, put in and the antennas get put into the gear closet or want to be out of sight because they're ugly. I understand that, but you're going to be shortchanging your system. So, I'm just here to remind you that best practices, not only do you need the antenna in the same room, but it also needs to be line of sight. And the reason I have this silly cartoon here is that people are big bags of salt water, great absorbers of RF. If your antennas are on a cart behind all the people, and all of a sudden your presenter starts having dropouts, it's because of the people. So you gotta get those antennas above the people. If you don't wanna see the antennas in the room, there are options. Um, many microphone systems, their antenna is built into their access point, and that's what you're looking at, and it looks no different than a Wi-Fi access point. Um, sure makes a, an antenna that looks just like an access point. So this is a UHTV antenna that you can paint, put on the wall, and it's, and it's not ugly. So just wanted to point that out. So here's what I'm talking about when a lot of people install their system and put the antennas in the back of the unit exactly how it's designed, but it wasn't designed to be put into a metal cabinet. Metal blocks RF. You're going to have RF dropouts. Maybe not all the time, but here and there you're not sure what it is. All right, again, you can remote, you can remote place these antennas, and that's what we recommend, in the room. If you can't put it in the room, at least get it outside of the rack and remote uh, um, attach them to the, to the front of the rack. Um, again, I should say, the antenna doesn't have to be in the same room, but that's going to give you your best chances of success. So in wrapping up, uh, just wanted to go over again. You know, we need to avoid interference. You know, which frequency band should you be in? You should have your integrator or whoever come out and do a scan of your environment. See what you're dealing with. More than likely, you've got choices all over the place, but if you're in downtown Chicago or maybe some other unusual situation, maybe another com company in your building has a call center that uses cordless headsets. You know, do a 24-hour scan, not just a one-moment scan. Do a long scan, find out what's going on in your business, and you can go, oh, well, guess we're not going to be in the deck band. You know, this, we got a call center here. Um, how many wireless microphones? Just think about that ahead of time, or maybe even think about how, if you needed to add on more microphones later, you know, what, you know, what limitations are there to the technology, you know, of your system? Don't assume. Batteries, we recommend rechargeable, but just have a backup plan. And antennas, once again, line of sight is your best hope there. Questions?